this video, I'm going to show you how I take my thumbnails in Affinity Photo 2 in the iPad, export them out in the darkroom, how I edit them, color correct them, sharpen them up, and then export them so it's ready to be a YouTube thumbnail. Here we are inside Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad, and I have just designed this thumbnail image in Affinity Photo 2, and I'm pretty happy with it, or I'm very happy with it. This is actually the thumbnail for my darkroom iPad review 2023. This video came out in my channel, oh, a few videos ago and this is the thumbnail design the Affinity Photo 2 and I could export it from Affinity Photo 2 and then upload it to YouTube Studio but as with nearly everything I do in Affinity Photo 2 my final step is to export it into Darkroom and then to edit it in Darkroom and then make a final version of it. So to do that we're going to come up to these three lines and we're going to go to export and in Affinity Photo 2 it gives us lots of options but the option I want to select is down here on the left hand side called share and we'll simply tap share you will see it gives us some options we're going to airdrop it message this is actually affinity photo one tiktok twitter procreate but darkroom is here at the top so if i simply just share it to darkroom just tap on it if by magic within a second it opens this picture up in darkroom and it's now flattened it and we can get to work on it and I'm, this is actually a real thumbnail that I'm editing and I'm going to show you my exact editing process of what I do once I bring it into Darkroom and get it to YouTube. So crop is the first tab up here. I don't need to worry about crop. I've already set up my measurements in Affinity Photo 2, 16 by 9. So we'll move down to presets. Sometimes I do save presets. That was one called Spring Sale, Star Wars 2022. That was for my Star Wars poster. And this one here, if I tap on it, says YouTube. But to be honest, I don't really use this preset much anymore. I'll click this arrow to undo. That was for a different set of YouTube thumbnails I did at the start of my channel. Now I simply go into the adjustments and the first adjustment I make straight out of the bat is sharpness. I always bring sharpness up to 100% and if we just tap, you can see before and after. And it does a few subtle things, but certainly around the text before after before after you can see it sharpens up the text really really well and it sharpens up a lot of the edges really really well too and then i'll just play about with the sliders normally i leave brightness contrast i can sometimes play with it in this case i'm just moving my finger about i'm happy enough with that i hardly touch clarity or highlights shadows i normally drop the shadows just a little I'll maybe drop that to about 15 and we're going to tap this way and this way and that will move in increments of ones but i'm going to put it to 15 whites blacks again blacks could be dropped ever so slightly to maybe five i'll normally leave saturation but i do bring up vibrance and the only thing that this is really going to bring up is going to be these pinks I'll bring up a bit of the oranges too, and these will be the characters, but really the pinks and the blues and the logo, it'll bring it up well. I'll maybe bring that up to about 25 or so. Temperature, I'm happy with tint, fade, all these things. I'm more or less happy with, if I tap on my finger there, you'll see before, after, before, after. I think this is looking really well. Normally miss out curves and come straight down to color. I'll click on this pink just to see if we're going to even highlight the pink a little bit more and we can go mad. That's not too bad actually for this thumbnail. We'll bring it up a little because you can bring it right down and that'll take all that pink color away. We'll I'm bring it in the middle. I think this is too pink. So we'll bring it maybe to about 30 and that'll just really make that pop. I'll maybe look at some of the blues here to see if I can lift the blues ever so slightly. And again, you can see in this Lego man, Marty McFly, the Lego guy, or that's luminous actually Andrew you're touching it's the saturation we'll want and I was wondering why it wasn't doing what I expected it to do and maybe bring it up maybe 40 and again that's just making that pop the orange this desk I would actually like to tone down the saturation this desk and bring it right down but it takes away too much the orange if I bring it down just maybe to about minus 40 I like that because it was, it was looking too orange and I want the main focus on the logo, on the text here. I think that's looking really nice. 
there's a little bit of green and just to try and make this green pop, sometimes you can, you can actually push that up to 100% and I will do it in this case because nothing else has really changed and there's something here changing. But I'll bring that up just to try and make that pop. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll go back into adjustments and I'm going to add a mask. And if I click add mask and click subject, you can actually see it's selecting the hands. It's also selecting one of our Lego characters. And it's even unbelievably selecting the kids in the background here along with the logo. To change that, we can click on the three dots and we can go to luminance range. And by playing about these sliders, you can see that that is taking away these guys. It's taking away some of the mask and the fingers too. And I think I just really want the hands here and not these guys in the back. And just to test this out, if I bring the brightness fully, you can see the changes it's making. Now it's only making it to the wee Lego character and these hands. And the only reason why I want these hands, I just think if we go to before and after, I just want to bring the brightness up ever so slightly in the hands. Yes, I'm going to bring in this wee guy up, but I quite like that as before, after, before, after. It's just really lifting the Apple Pencil, lifting the hands up a bit. It's lifting this wee Lego man up too, and I don't mind that. It's just... I think that just makes it stand out. And I think this is really a really nice thumbnail. And I'm just looking, is there anything else I would do with this thumbnail? No is the answer. I think I'm completely happy with that. And if I am happy with it, we'll click on the export button up in the top right hand corner. I will click save as a copy. It has saved it. And again, just that was before, after, before, after. And I, I'm really happy at those changes. You can see the difference. I was happy with it in Affinity Photo, but it's only when you bring it in the dark room. You can see it didn't take that long. It takes even quicker if I'm not explaining how to do things. I think that's a really nice thumbnail. And that's how I edit all my thumbnails for my YouTube channel. You know the tricks of the trade, so go ahead and start your own channel now using Affinity Photo 2 and Dark Room on the iPad. So there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something. Please give it a like. I'd appreciate that. Please subscribe. There's going to be more videos coming out soon on Affinity Photo 2 and Darkroom. And until the next time, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.